Hello, it's Kira with another Fringe Recap. Um, I'm sorry that I did not make a recap for Northwest Passage because it was Mother's Day and you should have been spending time with your dear mamas rather than watching a Fringe YouTube recap. So, yes. Um, and I was lazy also, so that's another excuse. But I am here now to recap uh, part one of Over There, the season finale of Fringe. And I'm like so sad that it's about to end. I mean, like, what am I going to do with my life? I'm just going to sit on the couch and like rot until season three comes back. And I know that sounds really pathetic, but yeah. So this episode was like so totally friggin' epic. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I, I could have had a heart attack. I'm not even kidding. Um, also, a little tiny recap-ish on um, Northwest Passage. Um, uh, I had a little theory that, like, kind of Peter was kind of seeing how Olivia was feeling through um, the sheriff woman. Like, an over-exaggerated version, I mean. Like, Olivia wouldn't have been that emotional, but how, like, she kind of, like, said that she wouldn't believe that he was gone until she saw the body or whatever. I think Olivia may be kind of feeling the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I should probably get on with this and uh, talk about um, Over There, part one. Yes. Um, episode 22, season two. Um, okay. Sorry. Here I go. So, um, there's a lot of, like, parallel universe and this universe weird thing. So, um, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So, in the parallel universe, uh, the New York City Fringe team, under the jurisdiction of the Department of Defense... Oh, I forgot another thing. I got stuck with the really bad Fox recap thing again, because... The person didn't write the friend of recaps, and I'm sad, because this tells me they probably won't be writing any more recaps ever, and I'll have to use these, but, oh well, they're, they're all, they're all right, but, no, no, never mind, they totally suck, but, okay, so, in the parallel universe, the New York fringe team, under the jurisdiction of the Department of Defense, they're learning about a breach in the system, so then, um, uh, Charlie and Olivia, and then in this recap they call her Bolivia. I don't know why, but I'll just play along, but I won't say. Okay, so, um, Scarly, Charlie, Ultimate Charlie, is back, and he's pretty awesome. He's bald, but, um, yeah. So, Charlie and Olivia, who, in, sorry, that, um, Twitter, um, uh, the Ultimate Olivia, by the way, has, like, the same hairstyle as me. Um, well, her hair is, like, ten billion times more epic than mine, but I still got really excited when I realized that. But, um, so they leave with the SWAT team, and then they're accompanied by this other agent who's kind of, like, a Peter replacement, since Peter isn't there, really. But his name is Lincoln Lee, and he's totally not even, like, half as badass as Peter. But, anyway, they go to the scene, and then, um, th he has this weird, uh silver tube thing that he puts down and they're like supposed to quarantine this big theater thing and so like it's like counting down it's like five forty seconds to quarantine and then uh alternate Olivia comes she's like oh quarantine or whatever and then back somewhere uh Lincoln's sending the feed to Colonel Broyles who is consulting with uh, Astrid, Alter Astrid, by the way, is, like, really, really different. Like, she has this weird, like, fringe division beret, and, like, she just has, like, really big eyes. She's just, like, some weird depressed robot. Like, yes, Agent Broyles is really odd. Um, yeah, I like the, this, the Astrid on this side way better. So, um, they're consulting, and then she says that the event has terminated, and, um, she recommends to Broyles that they do not enact a quarantine, so they tell, uh, Lincoln and the others to not quarantine, and they put up the little thing, the rod thing, and then Scarly finds this dude 
whose face is totally covered in tumors, and then um, Olivia and Lincoln, they get confused because he, um, he has a driver's license from this side and, like, a $20 bill, and they're like, oh, who the hell is Jackson? And um, they don't, uh, but what they don't see is, like, a little ways away, Olivia, Walter, and Nick Lane, and another girl are hiding and watching them. How did they get there? I don't know. Let's find out. So, um, it goes to a flashback 36 hours earlier, and by the way, my, um, my computer is that damn weird, so if I'm scrolling, the, my camera is kind of odd, so if it skips for a little, I'm sorry. Okay, so, um... Yes. 36 hours earlier, Walter is watching a uh, surveillance footage of when alternate of when Walternate takes Peter to the other side. Like he's like, you have to make this decision. You may not be able to come back. And Peter's just like, let's go. And I'm like, oh, Peter. And then uh, Olivia's drinking. Poor Olivia. And um, so, but she's at the bar. And then suddenly, like the observer comes, like really fast, and drops a paper next to her, and then leaves. And it's like some weird drawing, so that, um, sorry, uh, Olivia shows Walter the drawing, and, cause he called her before, and he's like, oh, Olivia, I just realized I remember something about Peter, I'm supposed to remember something about Peter, but I don't know what it is, oh my gosh! And he's like totally flipping out, so that Olivia goes back to the lab and, um, shows him the drawing that, uh, this, uh September gave her, and then... Uh, he remembers why the Observer warned him that Peter can never go over to the alternate universe, like, ever. And, um, he's like, we have to get Peter back, and then she's like, how do we do it? And he's like, no, we can't! And he's saying all these terrible things, and then she just goes, like, totally bad, and she's like, Walter, what do we do? And I'm like, yeah, Olivia. Okay, so, then they have to figure out a way to get Peter back. So... Uh, then they all, Broyles and Walter and Olivia are, like, walking through the halls all badass and stuff, and then some dudes talking to Broyles, and then, uh, they're in Master Dynamic, Dynamic, by the way, and he's like, oh, sir, you can't go with her, and he's like, don't even think about it, and then they storm into Nina's office, and then Broyles is like, you know, we have, uh, reason to think that you are making weapons for the other side, and then, and then Nina's all like, that's preposterous, and they all start yelling at each other and arguing and stuff, and then, um... Uh, they show Nina the drawing, and then she's like, this is William's technology, but he's never made it before or something. Or, or Massive Dynamic didn't build it. So, in the lab uh, at Massive Dynamic, Brandon, yeah, he's pretty cool, explains that to cross over to the other side, an entity's cells need to separate and may not come back together with the same cohesion. That is really confusing, but it's easier to see in the episode because he uses this weird mug with the thing and swirling and yeah. So he says that he suspects that Bell crossed over to the other side and back uh so many times that he may be degenerating. I'm not sure what that means. And this could be the reason why he won't return to this side. So then he just says that Olivia and the other Cortex Fag kids have the ability to cross over. So maybe if like a number of them work together to create enough energy for them to make it over there. So, um, uh, Broyles, uh, shows Olivia that Master Dynamic has helped more former Cortex Fed kids regain control of their abilities because they were like, oh, Olivia's the only Cortex Fed kid, and then Broyles is like, actually, you're not the, one, the only one left. So then they go to Master Dynamic and there's like, oh, well, they're already a mess of time. Sorry. And they've been helping the other fan kids, such as Nick Lane, and the... I believe she was the twin sister of the girl who caught on fire. No. Was that her? I don't know. Someone involved with fire. Who And so he was controlling his emotions, and then she was controlling the fire. She's become a successful pyrotechnic, and um, the... Uh, the, the guy who almost killed Olivia, remember with the, like, he could kill anyone with one touch? Yeah, he pretty much got control of all that. So, um, uh, so, 
Uh, one of them is Nick, and then the other are James and Sally. Sally is the fire pyro girl, and James is the a, a ex-killer guy. Well, he's not an ex-killer. I mean, not on purpose, but you know what I mean. So, Royals brings them all to... Oh, I gotta go to part two. Bye.